nscaler454 here, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be building the Diamond Coal Corporation kit from Walther's in nscale. So stay tuned. Opening the kit, I examined all the parts and make sure everything was there, and started to come up with a game plan. Instructions aren't perfectly clear to understand, but they aren't the worst either. I then gave all the plastic parts a soapy bath, which is helpful in getting the paint to adhere to the plastic. I then organized the parts based on how things are going to be painted. This is especially useful when airbrushing, as you can hit all the parts of the same color at the same time. I decided to start with the bottom of the building that has the fill gates. Because this is all going to be airbrushed the same color, I like to build as much as I can prior to paint. Some test fitting was helpful to ensure correct orientation, and then I was confident to secure it with glue. I made sure all the supports were as straight as possible. The cross bracing pieces kind of just float on the support beams and do not attach to the main base. I'm sure I don't have the terminology correct, but for the frame of the filling tank, I used the base to help with aligning all the pieces together. I also test fitted the bottom of the tank prior to the glue setting, and made any adjustments needed. Once satisfied, I could remove the frame from the base and paint it as one piece. For paint, I mixed about two parts Tamiya's dark iron and one part metallic grey, I then sprayed some flat black for weathering. To continue with the weathering, I used some Vallejo's weathering powders and some acrylic burnt sienna paint, which I made into a wash. Because of the amount of black soot and dirt that would show up in this industry, I didn't want to go too heavy with the rust, focusing mostly on the corners and the inside edges. The concrete sections I painted Model Master's concrete flat, mixed with some white paint in about a 3 to 1 ratio. I then went over it with a black wash. Then it was a matter of assembling the base of the structure together. Moving on to the windows and doors, I airbrushed them in a 50-50 mix of sky grey and brown. I then went over the surfaces with a black wash to bring out the details. The kit comes with a sheet of clear plastic that you have to cut into pieces for the windows. I cut pieces in 8 by 17 millimeter rectangles, but as it turns out, there is plenty of material to cover all the windows, so you probably don't need to cut out each window individually. 
Also use plenty of glue, as for some reason the clear plastic has a tendency to fall off once the glue is dried. There is also a protective film over the plastic that I chose to remove. For a building color I chose Tamiya's gunship grey and I am really happy with it. I used a black acrylic paint in a variety of different consistencies but concentrated most of the paint under windows and edges and used a streaking technique with a damp paper towel to weather it. For the roofs I sprayed Rust-Oleum flat black as a base coat and then went over it with Tamiya's bare metal silver. I then used the same weathering technique as I did on the building. I forgot to mention it, but I first sprayed a coat of flat black on all the inside walls to reduce the visibility when looking through the windows. I could then install the window frames. Of course we can't forget about the doors. Then we could begin assembling all the walls. The instructions are helpful, but in some cases you just need to use a little common sense on how it all goes together. It's not the easiest to balance, but once you have a few walls up, it gets easier and easier. Fortunately, the fitment is exceptional. The hardest part to install was this piece that goes on the bottom, a little reach under action and I got it in place. These two little pieces, part number 37, were not drawn clearly in the instructions. I figured out they go in these little slots above the doors, I'm guessing they are tracks for a crane. Some minor sanding was required to get the large roof to fit good. I chose not to glue down the top roofs so I could add inside lights at a later date if I wanted to. Working on the staircase, I started by painting anything that I wanted to look like old metal with Tamiya's dark iron mixed with metallic grey. Using a fine brush, I painted the handrails lemon yellow. Rather than a wood finish, I painted the walkway flat aluminum for a more modern appearance. Now I'm not going to lie, building the staircase was by far the most difficult process of the build. I chose to assemble the staircases first and then attaching the first one to the main building was done by gluing just a single attachment point and then it had to balance as I slowly added more pieces.
I could then start on the filling tank or slack bin according to the instructions. I did a little bit of sanding and prepping. Be sure to pay attention when gluing the top on as there is a correct orientation. Some final sanding was done to remove any visible seams. For the building that sits on top of the slack bin, the windows are already molded in so you have to be careful when painting. Don't forget to add the plastic glass. I painted the slack bin tank with a bare metal silver base coat and then airbrushed a thin coat of dark iron and I think it turned out great. Putting the tank and the building together was pretty straightforward. I put this platform together off the structure just to make it easier. I realized I forgot to put the end on the tank. Tweezers were helpful to get that on. After painting the rest of the hand railings, I finished putting it all together. I then put together the skinny conveyor structure, which is super simple. There is another conveyor made up of two halves. I did not build this as it may not be needed for my layout. Just a little bit more weathering is required, but we can call this one complete. It's a really fun model to build and the accuracy of the parts is very, very good. So it all fits together nicely. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give a like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.